What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. We had talked previously about a Black Friday ad from Best Buy and some of the sales they were doing looked pretty good, but if you're someone who's looking for some discounts on first party Switch titles that never seem to go down in price, you're gonna wanna check out Walmart's ad that we'll be going over here today because uh, some of the prices are looking pretty good for these first party Nintendo titles. Also, a lot of people are still looking for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series S and X, and I said I would kind of let you guys know as more information came in for when we could expect some stock to show back up in stores. Well, we got some information that could be pointing to stock being a problem until next year. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit the like button, helps out a ton, and if you're brand new here, hit the red subscribe button down below, and we're gonna start today with 13 Remake. It's uh. Wasn't great when it came out. Got some pretty bad reviews, especially if you go on the Steam page for it and you look under the user reviews. A lot of people pointing out problems with the overall game itself when it comes to AI, bugginess, just in general, the game crashing and just not functioning correctly. And then on top of that, the visuals being completely changed away from what made it unique in the first place, which was its comic book look. Well, it looks like Microids did put out a statement trying to explain the situation and what their plans are. We would like to offer our most sincere apologies for the game's technical issues in its present state, 13 does not meet our quality standards and we fully understand players' frustrations. The pandemic has impacted the game's production on many levels. Pivoting to home working for the teams has added unexpected delays in the development schedule and the QA process. We hope we'd be able to provide a day one patch fixing all the issues, but the development of this update is taking more time than expected. So they go on further to say, we are going to be working through different patches and updates and releasing them in the coming weeks. And I don't know, maybe they hope to have this thing fixed by the end of the year. The problem with this excuse is they should have just delayed the game because it sounds like they knowingly released a broken game for $50. By the way, this wasn't like a cheap game. So the pandemic situation, sure, I I'm, I'm absolutely positive that affected their development. No, no question there. But the correct path would have been, hey, we don't want to release a broken game to you and make you pay us and then get really frustrated and annoyed with what we released. We'll see you guys in January or February with the new release date. Sure, you already delayed it once, but Cyberpunk's been delayed like 20 times. You can delay this game again if you had to. I feel like people would have understood and they still would have picked it up in February. I just feel like they didn't want to miss two things. One, the holiday and two, next gen launches. Also, we got a release date now for Retro Mania Wrestling. We talked about this a while ago when it was first announced, the sequel, official sequel now to WrestleFest, and it is an old school wrestling game, the 2D looking sprites and all of this. You can see some of the trailer here, the release date we have now, February 26, 2021. That's for the PS4, PC, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox One. Also, what's really cool about this is as you look through the trailer, you may notice something. That's right. We have a cameo from the Spawncast own RGT85, which is really, really cool to see that in there. I'm sure he'll be talking about this game and probably doing gameplay and all this on his channel, but that's a really neat thing to see in the trailer. And hey, it, it's always fun to see kind of like the old school wrestling game make a comeback here as from basically like games, callback to games from the 90s. So yeah, I'll be checking this one out in February and keep an eye out. Cause like I said, I'm sure there'll be some gameplay and coverage coming from Sean's side. Oh, and do you remember how we had that update for the Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection? We heard that there was gonna be inverted camera controls added so we can change that around. And for people who weren't exactly thrilled with not having that option, well, it turns out Nintendo went a little further and I'm a little confused why this wasn't just part of it originally, but check these notes out here, that's right. They added Nintendo GameCube controller support for Super Mario Sunshine. That is only in TV mode and sure, that's fine. You would plug in the adapter that they sell separately as they say here and you can then just use your GameCube controller. There are other fixes and things that have been applied across all titles, probably some bugs and glitches and little things they wanted to clean up, but you can now use the GameCube controller and I have not tried this yet. I, I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up after uh, this, checking that out probably today at some point. But from what I've seen online, it, apparently the analog trigger works correctly. So you can get the old school GameCube feel just outright with your Switch plugged in in docked mode, the analog trigger and all, and play through some Mario Sunshine. That's great. Again, would have been cool to see it there in the first place, but maybe they took feedback and said, wow, people really want that GameCube controller? Who'd have thought? Let's go ahead and add that in. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with a pretty big Black Friday ad from Walmart, specifically around games. Sure, like TVs and appliances and all these other things will be on sale, but we really care about the games here. Now, we do know the Switch will have that bundle that comes with 
Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and it'll come with the Switch V2, the one with the better battery life, at $300. So they're pretty much just throwing Mario Kart in along with the Switch and a three-month membership for the Nintendo Switch online service, which, hey, you get the Super Nintendo and Nintendo games and uh, any of the extra little games that they attach to the service as well. So uh, I guess that's kind of cool to have that there. But the big thing here that people are gonna be curious is what kind of discounts are they gonna have on some of those first party Switch titles? Well, they're pretty good. Check this out. This is from their ad here. And we can see we have at $30, we have Fire Emblem Three Houses. That is a very good game to pick up at $30, by the way. The amount of content, the time it takes to play through that game. Awesome, awesome pickup for $30. Super Mario Maker 2. Super Mario Aces, that one's a little older, along with Splatoon 2, but those still have a ton of gameplay to get through there. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, Yoshi Crafted World, Luigi's Mansion 3, which $30 for the Luigi's Mansion 3, awesome pickup there as well. And then Zelda Link's Awakening, they really do have quite a few good first party titles here from Nintendo at what is basically half price. I know, we've talked about this before. Nintendo doesn't like marking down their games at all. Like a lot of these games, are just $60 and they've pretty much been cut in half. So it's almost like buy one, get one kind of on normal price, $60 gets you two pretty high quality first party Nintendo Switch titles. Now, apart from that, we also have several PlayStation and Xbox games also on sale. The Crash Trilogy will be a part of that $30 sale. You also have Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, a very good game to grab. Uh, it's not that much cheaper technically at $30. Still a good one to pick up. Watch Dogs Legion is already $30. I was a little surprised on this one because that just came out. And uh, hey, if you picked it up for 60, you might be looking at this kind of scratching your head that it's already that cheap. NHL 21, UFC 4, and Avengers, sure, Avengers. That's that. That's probably one to pick up when it hits PlayStation Plus. We also have most of the recent sports titles, FIFA 21, Madden 21, and NBA 2K21, all at $28 each. And if you wanna go down to the super cheap bargain bin section for $15, they have games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Destroy All Humans, which is a pretty good remake, and at 15 bucks, I think that's a good pickup there. Rainbow Six Siege, Man Eater, and then you also have Sonic Mania on the Switch, Mario Rabbids, which seems to always be $15 on Switch anyway, but then Bioshock Collection, that is a pretty good one there. As for anyone asking if there's any PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X sales, no, the sale would be them just having the system in general. Anyway, all of these will start with most of them being pretty much online. So you go on there, you order them, and they'll ship them out to you starting on the 25th. So keep an eye out for that. The big ones would be these first party Switch titles. Generally, they're not on this deep of discounts like ever, so it might be worth picking up uh, one or two of them, especially if there are any that look really good here. I would recommend certainly Luigi's Mansion 3, and if you're looking for a good strategy RPG with a very deep story that you can play through several times, it's gotta be Fire Emblem. Next up, let's talk about the stock situation around the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series S and the Xbox Series X. Finding them in stores this holiday, as in like just on store shelves, I gotta tell you, it's gonna be almost impossible. You're gonna have to really be searching around and hunting down these systems online as they appear back in stock. It's it's gonna be tough, especially if this is something that you want to have as a gift for someone or you're just looking for it for yourself. Uh, you're gonna be scrambling probably for most of the, well, this month and then into December. But what if you had to do that all the way until maybe April? next year because according to Microsoft, at least on there, and keep in mind here, Microsoft and Sony deal with a lot of the same parts vendors, especially AMD for their chip that they use in their systems. Seems like April might be when Microsoft can kind of get caught up here. Now the following quotes are from the Xbox chief financial officer, Tim Stewart. This was transcribed by Seeking Alpha saying, I think we'll continue to see supply shortages as we head into the post holiday quarter. So Microsoft's Q3 calendar Q1. And then when we get to Q4, all of our supply chain continuing to go full speed heading into kind of the pre-summer months. And that's where I want, that's where I start to, I expect to see a little bit of the demand, the supply profile meeting the demand profile. You'll be outside of a holiday window. We'll have supply cranking over the next, what, four, five, six months. And that's when I expect to see really the de that demand profile start to be met, which will be really, really great. We know that not everyone was able to get an Xbox Series X and S immediately and are working tirelessly with our partners around the world to bring as many new consoles to as many of you as possible over time and encourage you to check in with your local retailers directly for more details on availability in your market. I do think just over time sporadically, you will see Xboxes and Playstations pop up in retail stores, but consider this, Microsoft doesn't have 
any big exclusive just pushing the Xbox along. So to hear that even their supply is having a hard time meeting the demand just, and they expect that until April, what do you think Sony's is going to be like? Because they do have something like Demon's Souls, they've already talked about Ratchet and Clank, coming we, next year, it seems, and Gran Turismo popping up. They've talked about God of War. They are kind of piling up with several games, then even some third parties like Final Fantasy, just to kind of ensure momentum. And I do think the overall demand for the PlayStation 5 will just be higher in general, at least for the foreseeable future. So hearing April from Microsoft, that's, that's tough because I think it's gonna be even longer for PlayStation, which plays perfectly into scalpers hands. If you, again, if you look on eBay, PlayStations are like $1,000 and up. $1,000 seems to be like the minimum for a PlayStation 5. Some are listed for like two or $3,000 for some reason, but you look on the sold listings and they're selling for $1,500 or $1,600 and they're gonna get higher and higher as we get towards the holidays, specifically as we get towards like Christmas yeah, they're just gonna keep climbing in price. And it, it is a shame because like I said, a lot of us see the scalpers online and we're like, I just, if, if something would just happen to where all of a sudden millions of PlayStation 5 showed up on store shelves, it'd be really funny to see the person who has 30 PlayStation 5s on eBay have to then sell them at just retail price and have wasted all their time. But it seems like at least right now, they'll be taken care of all the way through possibly March or April next year. I will stress this one more time, however, the PlayStation Direct Store seems to be the correct way to go right now. And you know what? It seems like Best Buy might be figuring something out here. And I might go over that in a, another video on the second channel after my Game & Watch experience getting that pre-ordered because they did something a bit different for that one. So those two things you can do, and I guess just Follow Wario64 because uh, Wario keeps tweeting out different times where these systems go up for order online. And I have seen people able to get them as long as they're paying attention to his Twitter account. Maybe even set a notification because it's, it's gonna be rough going through December looking for these systems. Next up, let's talk about some potential leaks from Amazon France once again for the Switch. It seems like Amazon France, they're kind of hit and miss when it comes to some of these accidental leaks for different retail games, specifically around the Switch. Sometimes they're dead on, other times they're like way off. But it looks like a few were spotted and it seemed to get people pretty interested in the idea of either of these coming over. I think one probably will, the other one is still kind of up in the air to me. Let's go over here to this tweet where you can see two being pointed out right now, popping up on Amazon France. We have Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time remake, and then Near Replicant. Now. Prince of Persia is out in January. I kind of feel like we would have already heard about that if it was coming in January for the Switch. Near, however, isn't until April. That's possible, but you know what? The one that I would figure would be coming to the Switch is Prince of Persia. It already looks like a PS2 game anyway, right? Now, I, I look at that and I say, well, we did see it accidentally pop up on their website. Remember that one where it was like, oh wait, the Switch version is available too for Prince of Persia? That game appears to be heading to the Switch at a later date from Ubisoft. That could be one that maybe is in the summertime. Near Replicant would make a lot of sense on the Switch. I mean, the Switch has built up such a massive following in Japan with that install base just there alone. You figure that's where you'd release it. And uh, a lot of uh, different Japanese RPGs and, and other games really for that region have sold very, very well on the hybrid system. So that seems like one, as long as everything worked out for them, whether it's with the cartridge or making sure the game runs well enough, that would be a good spot, I think, for the game. So neither of these are really out of the realm of possibility, but it's Amazon France, and like a lot of times they just aren't right with most of their listings. So I don't really take this as confirmation for either of them. And if I had to pick one of these that probably would be happening, it's Prince of Persia. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about the PlayStation 5 and how they're doing something that I did get on Nintendo about and still kind of get on Nintendo about because it has to do with being able to back up your save games and remove them from the PlayStation 5 or even the Switch, where the idea was with the PS4, you would be able to back them up to a USB stick and you would have at least a local backup. Well, turns out you can't actually do that with the PS5 right now. And you know what? The PS5 is missing a lot of features. It really, really is at launch, which is, it makes you wonder a bit about the launch of this system and even the Xbox missing some of their games like Halo Infinite, but either way, it does appear that the only way 
to back up your saves from the PS5. As you can see here, this is from Tweaktown. PlayStation Plus is the only way to back up PS5 save games. No USB save exports. And I said, really, is that true? I went and took a look. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be. You can you can back up PS4 games for your, those saves, but nothing when it comes to your PS5 games. You have to pay for PlayStation uh, PlayStation Plus in order to back up that to the cloud. And that's, yeah, that's unfortunate. Like I said, I've gotten on Nintendo a lot about that. So I, I guess we'll get on Sony about it too. That's something that needs to happen in an update like soon. It is a little concerning that your save only exists either there or on the PlayStation Plus servers for the cloud backup because maybe you don't pay for PlayStation Plus, in which case if your PlayStation does kind of kind of have an issue where we've talked about rest mode, things dying there, the, the system hard crashing, and you maybe are almost done Demon Souls and then, oh wait, that save's gone. Yeah, that wouldn't be a fun thing to wake up to. And we'll finish up with a comment of the day as you're seeing here, this is from Dar Sirius saying, looks like the PS5 needed a year to be ready to be honest. Yes, the, the, the crashing, the bugs, and all the stuff that's being posted up online doesn't look great for the system in terms of its overall stability. But if you look on the other side, both systems, I think, probably could have waited till 2021. I mean, we were just talking about not being able to back up your saves from the PlayStation 5 games to like a USB stick, something you could do with the PS4. But we do see Sony at least showing up with some games. Demon's Souls, Spider-Man Miles Morales is awesome, by the way. I finished that the other night, had a blast playing through. It looks fantastic on the PS5. However, Microsoft's end, their system is good. Their ecosystem is solid. The software is good in terms of the OS and all of the features. They have expandable storage with the memory card, something that Sony still doesn't have ready to go with their NVMe drive storage. But they didn't have like their Halo Infinite, their big game. So I almost think now gaming is big enough. It, like it, it's so much bigger now that I don't think these companies have to go by the holiday schedule, the traditional November release doesn't have to be a thing anymore. And I feel like the Switch showed that. The Switch releases in March, sells out completely, no problem. Hard to find for months and months after it comes out. And it's still doing well since then. They keep selling tons of games, tons of hardware. These systems, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X and S, really if they would have been more comfortable and more feature complete and game complete, even on Microsoft's side, releasing in like April or May of 2021, they probably could have done it and it would have worked out just fine. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Where's that Black Friday advertisement from Walmart? Did you see anything there you were thinking about picking up, especially if you're grabbing a Switch? Are you a bit surprised to see some of these Nintendo Switch first party titles that rarely see price drops get cut in half when it comes to their price down to $30. There are some high quality games in there to certainly pick up that really justify that $30 price. Also, what about the next gen stock situation? Current gen now, I guess, right? PS5 and Xbox Series X. Were you able to find one? Are you still trying to find one now? And what do you think about stock possibly being a problem even going into summer of next year? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.